Hello everyone. I uh, wanted to do a channel update here. Um, it's been a couple days since I posted anything. I, I just had some personal, a lot of personal things I was working on and, and just need a little break to kind of refocus. And um, I, I like kind of stepping back a little bit after I pushed through a fairly significant effort. And last week was by far my most productive. So I just wanted to sort of take a couple steps back and think about um, what I've been doing. So this video is going to be just basically me um, providing a little commentary um, about uh, what where things are going because I'm certainly I'm starting to find a bit of a groove and I'm finding a I've got a couple ideas about exactly where I want to take this. Um, so in doing so, I wanted to introduce um, uh, a channel that I'm using as inspiration for some of this effort. Um, and which might seem a little strange because it's not a news channel, it's a history channel actually. Um, but let me just switch over um, to The Great War. Uh, so this is a YouTube channel, The Great War, that uh, started back in 2014. And it's primarily, uh, it's, its main content is a week-by-week -week retelling of the historical events of World War I, or the Great War as it was referred to at the time. Uh, of course, it didn't get the name World War I until after World War II. Uh, it was always known as the Great War up until that point. But anyway, so this gentleman here, um, and I'll go to uh, uh, a video just to talk about it. I'm going to play a little bit of, this is an example of, this is the latest uh, weekly update. Uh, and so uh, let me play this example just to give you a taste of exactly how what this this sort of format and, and then I'll come back after I play a couple minutes uh, to talk about how I want to incorporate these ideas into my work. Russia and Ukraine were no longer fighting the world war or were they? They were making separate peace negotiations with the central powers even as the Bolsheviks were invading Ukrainian territory. Well one of those pieces was signed this week and the other one blew up. And you know what it led to? Total chaos. I'm Indy Nidell. Welcome to The Great War. Last week, the peace negotiations between Russia and the Central Powers were coming to an ugly head as Germany demanded huge chunks of Russian territory, while at the same time pushing for a separate peace with Ukraine that might seriously damage German ally Austria-Hungary. American troops heading to Europe drowned off the Irish coast and there were, yet again, machinations in the British High Command. At this point, that last thing is like a broken record. It continued this week. British commander Sir Douglas Haig was summoned to London to consult about the Robertson situation, a situation we saw last week. On the 9th, Lord Derby told Haig that Chief of Staff Willie Robertson was to be replaced whether Haig liked it or not. And the military representative on the Allied Supreme War Council at Versailles, which was Henry Wilson at the moment, would direct Haig in the matter of the Inter-Allied Reserve. That military rep would also be Deputy Chief of Staff. Haig then met with Prime Minister David Lloyd George and pointed out that the council now had really wide-ranging powers and that the military rep had been given decision-making powers that should lie only with the British government. He also... Okay, I just want to stop it there. Um, uh, so, as you can see, this is a nice... It's a much more professional package than the type of video I'm producing right now. Um, but... Uh, this gentleman, Indy Nidell, uh, is based out of Germany. He has a whole team of people, including a producer and uh, uh, cameramen and video editors, as well as historical researchers as well. Um, so they all work together to put together these packages. And, and this is one of the videos that they put out on a weekly basis. There's also um, a QA. and a um, video that gets put out on the weekend. This is an example of that. Love the show. You guys are doing an amazing job. My question for Out of the Trenches is this. With all the fighting on all the fronts and the advance of the enemy, there must have been a high number of people displaced by the war, but I found little to no mention of them anywhere with the exception of the Armenian Genocide. Were there any humanitarian efforts 
to aid the refugees and displaced people during the war and return them to their homes after the war. Well, we've talked about a, a bunch of them, actually. Um, well, the Great War caused an enormous refugee and humanitarian crisis in many areas of the world. You had... So, again, I'll just stop it. I don't want to play the full content of these. Um, I'll put the links to both these videos down at the bottom of this description, in the description of this video, if you are actually, if this piece your interest, you are a historical buff. Um, I highly recommend this channel. Um, in particular, it's actually, I find it's um, a very useful place to learn about a period in history that has a lot of parallels with our current situation uh, globally, where you have a lot of, you know, Na global powers all sort of rattling their sabers going back to the beginning of the war uh, uh, you know there was a, and a lot of the heads of state in many of these nations especially in Europe um, were f either corrupt or incompetent or simply uh, just greedy uh, the Germans in particular had ambition on their side they when they started the war they thought they could uh, they could march straight to Paris and take France out of the war within a matter of weeks or months, um, and then they thought they could be able to win this, win a whole war in a space of a year. Obviously, that did not happen. The war stretched out for uh, the period of four years uh, or more, and uh, and it resulted in millions of lives on all sides, and was a real waste of effort in many cases, and in the end resulted in the collapse of many of these global powers, including Russia and the German Empire and the Hungarian-Austrian Empire and the Ottoman Empire. Um, all of these organiz organizations were, you know, the whole political landscape around the world in many ways was totally rewritten after World War I. Um, and, and like I said, many of these issues we are facing today where we've got really poorly run or corrupt governments in many of these traditionally global powers. Um, this, so it's either corruption by uh, intentional or it's corruption through just incompetence. Um, you have many uh, intelligence and, and competency have been draining from our political system and all most Western political systems for the last 20, 30, 40 years. Um, and it is continuing and things are getting worse and worse. And eventually we're going to end up in a very much similar situation as what the world found itself at the beginning of the Great War. So that's why I say learning about, I, I found learning about World War I and in particular in, in this in-depth, you know, sort of real-time way of experiencing it has been a really enlightening way to both learn about the past but also learn about how to avoid such pitfalls in the future so and that's where i think um the benefit of doing a similar approach to the current day i think could have similar uh, benefits one of the you know real issues that we have with with news today is that it's it's you know the viewing population is aging out um older people are still consuming the news through the newspapers and radio and television um, and they really haven't made much of a jump to the internet, and those on the internet haven't embraced the legacy forms. They've moved on to newer forms of news uh, organizations, and many of them are not based on the same sort of standards and, and ideals that the traditional news system uh, you know, evolved you know, 100 year or so years ago, just over 100, 100 years ago, um, to combat the exact same problem that we're facing right now. And there's a really great book um, called Trust Me, I'm Lying. Um, who, that uh, I'll put a link to that in the description as well if you're interested in learning more about how the media has evolved over its history. Because the media has not been always as free and open as it you know, presently is or, or you know, even more so was over the past uh, uh, 10, 20, 30 years. Um, you know, yellow journalism was was rampant in the uh, uh, leading up until this period of the Great War. In fact, a lot of the issues, the reason why the Great War, you know, lasted so long was because of bad media. The the, the populations were basically being sold a a a, 
politically washed or whitewashed situation about uh, you know a, a, a portrayal of the war um that a very biased portrayal that reinforced the their own nation's uh brightness in the battle and 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 the inc- and inc- end up encouraging the perpetuation of this thing until it lasted for so as long as it did um when really it, it didn't make a whole lot of sense that you know once especially on the western front uh, they basically dug into trenches and didn't move for four years. There wasn't, and other than losing hundreds of thousands of lives on a regular basis under useless and bloody incursions into the other side that didn't really result in significant change in, in what was going on. So, anyway, um, it's a great channel, so I guess in one sense this is an advertisement for the Great War. I highly recommend you check it out. But just to give you an idea, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Is I, I'd like to create a video content that's in a similar quality of production value. Um, <clears throat> due to the fact that this is a one-man show right now, I'm the only person kind of working on this. I'm limited in, in what I can actually achieve. I'm not going to try and match that quality on my own because, again... He's got a team, and, and if you want to produce video quality on YouTube of that level, you need at least uh, you know, a good uh, almost half a dozen people. You could probably, even a team of two or three or four people could make a significant, uh, significantly better product than what I can make. Uh, but until I can get volunteers, and if you are interested in this and you'd like to help out, um, please uh, leave a comment in below this video, or, or uh, you can... Uh, Tweet me on my Twitter accounts, just Jason Ross uh, or Modern Democracy. Both of those Twitter handles I have, so you can tweet me on either of those. Um, anyway, I'm going to wrap this up, but uh, just before I go, so the couple of things I'm going to work on this week, I'm going to work on trying to get a mapping tool where I can actually, uh, s- actually select individual countries and, and maybe even have certain cities so that when I bring a news item on my weekly roundup, I'm going to be able to zoom in in much the same way that uh, the Great War does, like like I showed on, oh, hang on, where was that video? This one here, let me just wind back. Pointed out that only the coast, and there so were, this map here, yet again. Let me just pause it uh, and zoom in. So I want to create something similar to this where I can have uh, some, uh, even some animation possibly, uh, but at least have highlighting, color coding uh, the information. So when I'm talking about an issue, I want to be able to visualize it on the screen. Um, anyway. Uh, so a couple other things, if I can, um, the other neat things that this great war channel does, uh, is it also has a, it does regular specials on key historical figures or, you know, the nations involved any any specific nations involvement during the war, including he goes to, uh, he'll go to like South African, uh, sorry, South American countries or, or African nations, or, you know, some countries you wouldn't necessarily think of being involved it was a world war and there were, you know, the battles did occur mostly in Europe and the Middle East, but, uh, and Africa, but, and all other places of the, of the world were affected by it. So, uh, and he also does things on technologies and, and, uh, key historical battles or historical events like the Revolu- Russian revolution, that sort of thing. There's, he, they do special videos on that. And so uh, that's something else I'd like to start to build up is as I start covering these topics, I might deep dive into one and then start putting together some playlists or, even organizing, I might build a website around that I can uh, make it easy to sort of find when a story comes up that I've already covered in the past, I want to be able to easily link to those other videos or other content that, t- content that I create. Uh, so if you're sort of jumping into the story midway through, you can always go back and catch up. And that's something I think that, you know, you can't do with traditional news because they're not structured that way. They're structured around either a printed, you know, series of sheets on a newspaper or a, you know, programming windows, like, you know, certain times of the day for radio and television. Um, if you change the way that news is writ- uh, created and, and, and focus it instead on putting the consumer first and, and having it so that they can customize their journey through the news, I think that's a... Uh, a real potential for I, I think I think it's a future for news essentially and I think there's a real potential to grow so anyway I'm gonna stop this sort of little rambling um, 
uh, introduction here. Just uh, I'm going to close off the video, but I just wanted to give a little update for those who might be curious about where I'm going or what my plans are. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, tune in tomorrow. I'll be back to doing more news content and uh, I'm going to do some deep dives as well on a few key subjects that I've got planned up. Um, Jordan Peterson in particular, there's, I'm going to go into uh, the legislation, the, the Bill C-13 I think is the code, uh, that was really the first controversy that sort of rose into the public, uh, you know, made him visible to most of the public. Um, because it brings us some other issues that I don't that have been kind of missed around uh, issues with our government and the way the government works uh, that uh, I want to talk a bit more about as well. Um, and then I'm also going to uh, do a couple other. I th I'm thinking I'm going to do some uh, cover a couple of books that I found are inspirational uh, for me for learning. It. Like I mentioned, the uh, Trust Me I'm Lying book uh, in this video. Uh, I, I want to sort of feature some. Um, Yes, key other media that if you want to deep dive or learn more about certain subjects, I'm going to try and highlight those as well. Uh, so again, I will put those, I'm going to start working on, on some book and possibly some YouTube channels as well. Um, just because I the, YouTube is a growing uh, entertainment platform and there's a lot of really neat stuff out there I think uh, most people aren't aware of, uh, uh, of both uh, for informing yourself as well, for, as well as entertaining yourself. So... Anyway, uh, I will wrap up, but thanks again for paying attention and, and for watching. Um, thanks for staying with me through this, and uh, we will talk to you tomorrow.